Hello developers and welcome to the Tech Rally channel. Before I talk about today's topic about why I think 100 days of code kind of sucks, if you are an aspiring developer or a software developer looking for tips and tricks, I highly recommend you to subscribe to my channel. So let's talk about 100 days of code. What is it? 100 days of code is a coding challenge that is meant to keep you accountable and to make you consistent on your coding journey. There are two main rules of 100 days of code. One, code a minimum of an hour every day for 100 days. And two, tweet your progress every day with the hashtag 100 days of code. The reasoning behind 100 days of code is that we as people tend to waste a lot of time watching Netflix or YouTube or Instagram. Even if we do have good intentions of learning how to code or become a better developer, we naturally gravitate towards not wanting to do it after a fun event or if you had a long day of work. By coding every day for 100 days, you are forcing yourself to make coding a priority. Outside looking in, I love it. Tweeting publicly and making yourself accountable and having a group of people in the same situation as you tweeting the same hashtag makes you feel like you're part of a bigger community. But wait, I got a few problems with 100 days of code and I'll tell you why. Number one, it's too easy to fail and fail often. I'm going to use an example that we've all been before where we made a New Year's resolution that we're going to start working out, getting in shape, go to the gym every day, diet and get that summer bod. In the beginning, you're going to be super motivated and consistent. Maintaining your health is a priority and everything else is secondary. But as time goes on, you see yourself losing steam. Maybe you skip a day or two. Maybe a day becomes two, two becomes three. And then eventually, sometimes you might not be working out for the whole week. This is very natural and happens to the best of us. We find more enjoyable things to do like hanging out with friends, going on trips, whatever. This notion of working out every day becomes burdensome than beneficial and you can't enjoy your life. Similar to the working out concept, 100 days of code, although not too long and very doable, in my opinion, sometimes it could be a recipe for failure. I've seen so many tweets where people are restarting their 100 days of code because they missed a day. I think that's perfectly fine, but if you're constantly resetting your 100 days of code challenge, then it's going to be problematic. For some, it can really affect your psyche to not be able to accomplish this goal. In this case, you can start to question yourself if coding is actually right for you, if you can accomplish this task. To be honest, this goal shouldn't be I need to code every day necessarily, but it should be how do I learn in the most optimal way? And that goes to my second point. Number two, one hour of coding is not enough. Yes, 100 days of code states that it should be a minimum of an hour per day, but it can send the wrong message. Coding in general requires more time than an hour and you could fall trapped to pacing yourself because you know that you need to code every day for an hour minimum. To truly retain information, there are going to be moments when you need to spend hours and hours on a problem. And when you do solve it, you're going to need to dedicate some time to take a break. Imagine coding for five hours and learning everything in that one day. You feel super exhausted from it and could use a day break but you know the next day you have to do the minimum of one hour. It can be super deflating and you can burn yourself out trying to check off this box that says, I did it. Even if you found the energy to code that day, is your mind at a good place? Can you really retain all that information? I know everyone works a little bit differently, but if I spent 10, 12 hours one day and expected myself to really be as efficient the next, it wouldn't really work out. To me, rather than focusing on every day I need to code, I would recommend allocating a number of hours per week to dedicate yourself to this journey. There are going to be some days where you can do five hours, some days you can do 30 minutes, some days you just want to skip because you need that break. Either way, you're dedicating pockets of time in your schedule to really focus and learn. I've seen people that partake in 100 days of code do only the minimum of one hour per day. And when they finish their journey, they realize they didn't really retain too much information. They were just trying to cram everything within that hour pocket window. I've heard this from a different channel called Coder Foundry, and I'll agree with him that you probably need to dedicate a total of 700 hours of coding to become a software developer. How you distribute those hours is really up to you, but don't feel like you're hamstrung to do one hour of coding every single day. 
The only caveat about giving yourself this flexibility is that you have to be dedicated in doing this. I would say the good thing about the 100 days of code is that it keeps you accountable. But to me as an adult, you shouldn't need something like this to pursue software development. It's about creating habits that work for you and making sure you stick to it. Give yourself a weekly benchmark, assuming that 700 hours of coding is what you need to become a software developer. You may study more or less to become a software developer, but I think it's a great starting point. With your weekly hour dedication figured out, then you could figure out how long it's going to roughly take for you to start applying to jobs and interviewing. And we can talk about that in a different video, but based on the number of hours you worked, studied, and built projects, that's when you know you'll be ready to start interviewing. At the end of the day, if 100 days of coding has been helpful for you, I would recommend to keep doing it. I want to share a alternative ways for you to still be consistent on your coding journey without necessarily restricting yourself to studying every single day. I would hate for people to get demoralized because they broke the 100 days of code and eventually quit. Although the public support is really nice with the hashtag, reality is is that no one is really watching you to see you fail. So don't feel demoralized or feel like you want to give up or you let someone down if you missed a day. Find that comfort level for you and see what works with your schedule. Building your own projects will definitely require longer than just one hour per day, but that's also the beauty of building something from scratch. You did it yourself, you spent the hours, and you built a beautiful product. I hope that this was super helpful for you. I love the 100 Days of Code community, and I think 100 Days of Code grew into a bigger following than what was really expected, and that is so good to see so many aspiring developers. If you like content like this, I highly recommend you to hit that like and subscribe. If you want to have one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, I also have a calendar link below. Either way, I'll see you later, and Tech Rally out. Bye.